this video is going to be a brief introduction to Quandl and how you can access Quandl data in your Python script. For example, I show you here a time series plat platinum closing prices and I access this data using Quandl in Python. Now in order to use Quandl in Python, you can install a module called Quandl um, and this module uh, can be installed using pip install. Um, and you can see here in this coding example, I'm importing that module and using that module. Now one thing you will have to do is you will have to uh, communicate an API key um, to the quantum module and this will allow you to um, access the API and retrieve information through the API provided by Quandl. In order to do this, um, or more specifically in order to get this API key, you need to set up a, a user on Quandl. Um, once you created a user on Quandl, you can also try to search their database for tickers. So for example, in this case, I was looking for platinum prices. So I'm searching their, their database. You can see there's a distinguishment between free and premium um, data sets. So the free data sets, they are available without any payment, while premium data sets um, are only available if you pay, um, uh, if you contribute to the sub pack by, by paying uh, for some kind of uh, uh, contract. Um, so in this case, I, I chose to use this data set um, here. Um, and if you click it, you will get some, some overview of the data. You can also <coughs> uh, see how you can um, use the, the da respective data set um, in, for example, uh, Python or in R or in Excel. So there's a documentation here on site. Um, one important thing is here always the ticker. So in this case, uh, the ticker is provided here. So if we go back to this example with um, the platinum prizes and how I query them in, in Python, I'm setting up the API key using the Quandl module and then I'm importing NumPy and Pandas. The reason for that is that Quandl allows you to retrieve data in NumPy format. Um, and I prefer um, the pandas format, so I'm converting um, the NumPy array into a pandas data frame. The method or function from uh, Quandl that you can use for retrieving uh, a data set is the get function. And you have to provide to it the ticker of the data set. In this case, um, I showed you that the ticker was listed, uh, if we click on usage, Click on Python. Here you can find the ticker here. You can also find it when you uh, search in the database. So the ticker was already provided here. This ticker has to be provided as a string and that's the first argument for the get function. Then as an optional parameter, you can specify the returns um, argument. In this case, I set it to NumPy. And now this function will return the data as a NumPy array, which I can easily convert into a pandas data frame. So I'm doing this and I'm showing you the header of the data frame. You can see in this case, I get a platinum prices all the way back from uh, the 1990s. Um, you can see this data set contains the prices for platinum as um, Open pri opening prices, so prices in the morning, this is uh, specified as AM, and closing prices, which are the PM prices. And then we have some prices specified back in the 90s in US dollar and um, British pound, um, but British pound was only specified for the opening prices. So in this case, um, I'm also looking at the tail of the data set, so you can see the latest entry in this case. Um, I created the post, I think, on April 4th or April 3rd. Um, the latest data entry is from April 3rd, um, 2020. And you can see by that time, um, the price is specified in all currencies. Now in this case, I wanted to provide a plot um, going all the way back to the 1990s. Um, so this is why in this case I used 
um, the uh, US dollar um, figures and I chose to only use the closing prices. So I'm creating a plot here and forwarding only the closing prices in US dollar, which you can see here. And that's then eventually using Matplotlib creating this plot. Now, in this case, the data set, um, there's also a data set for palladium prices. So I continue to make another example with palladium prices. Here we have a um, slightly different, um, yeah, slightly different ticker, which is PAL instead of PLAP. But um, the workflow is of course the same. So again, I'm retrieving a data set in NumPy format, converting it into a pandas data frame. I'm showing you the header and the tail for my circles to get an overview, which currency I should be choosing for getting the longest time horizon in my plot. And I'm creating a plot of the closing price for palladium and US dollar um, using that data that I retrieved from Quandl. So that's one example. Um, and you can find all sorts of data on Quandl, and there's also a lot of free data, so you don't necessarily need to have a premium account. Um, this is another example where I retrieved some automotive data. Um, so I made some posts on automotive data sources already. Um, this is just another example how you can use um, Quandl to also access uh, data on automotive industry. So in this case, I'm accessing data from the federal bank in Germany, so called the Deutsche Bundesbank. And they have a data set um, that is available <coughs> on Quandl 2. So this is just another example where I um, have the same workflow of setting up the API, I'm importing NumPy and Pandas, and then I'm using the get function from the Quandl module um, to access a certain data set. In this case, you can see the ticker specified here. And then I'm plotting basically the data contained by that data frame in a matplot, um, yeah, using matplotlib in, in Python. Um, in this case, it's the manufacturing output of a motor vehicle manufacturer's trailer and semi-trailer manufacturers in Germany as an index going back to the, to the 90s and all the way back now to, I think, 2017. Um, if I look at the tail of this data frame, I can see the um, youngest entry is from um, the end of 2017. So it seems like this data set is no longer being updated. So when you use Quandl, uh, you shouldn't just be using the, uh, the ticker and, and just blindly trust the data being accessed, but you should have some manual check um, ensuring that, that the data is up to date and, and that there's no, um, I mean, time horizon missing within the um, time series that you're analyzing, if you're analyzing a time series. So, yeah, basically it might be that data sets are not being um, maintained or are no longer being updated um, on, a, on a basis that you might require. So you have to check this. Yeah, in, in the video description, you can find some links for some coding examples in Python um, implementing the Quandl module.